Hello everyone, I am creating this follow-up tutorial to a uh, video that I made for my channel that is the most watched video of all time on my channel about tracing. So I will link that old video here because you might prefer to use the apps that I used for that tutorial of how to trace. But in today's tutorial, I'm going to share with you two free websites. I call them websites even though they act like apps because, you know, with apps, you've got to download them onto your phone. They take up space on your phone. But with these websites that act like apps, you go to the website and use them. And I really like that. So in today's video, we're going to talk about two free apps you, that you can use for free, artistassistapp.com and Pixlr, that's P-I-X-L-R.com. And we're going to use these two apps to create a drawing really quickly and easily. And by the way, full disclosure, this um, was the first person or company to uh, sponsor one of my videos. So I am very grateful to them. So I'm doing another video for them, showing off their um, really interesting ability to create a line drawing that wasn't available back when I did the video for them. So I wanted to come back and show this new feature that they just added to this app. So let's take a look. All right, here we are in a browser. I am typing in artistassistapp.com in the bar up there, the where you put the address wherever you want to go. Um, and then I'm going to hit enter. And so here it is, the best free um, art assistance tool. I would agree with that. All right, so this is what comes up and you can just click on this artist assist app link and then hit start now. Then you hit the upload gray button there up towards the top and then you go into your files and find the reference photo that you want to trace. So I'm going to trace this wild pony. Thank you to boys in Bristol on pexels.com for this wild pony. I do have a whole tutorial on this pony and over 200 other tutorials, but we're going to trace this guy for today's tutorial. And so you see along the top there, you can choose different um, areas to go in the app. I'm going to choose, um, mm -hmm. I'm going to choose the line drawing one and it's thinking, thinking, thinking. I went to the outline tab and here's what it came up with. Now, the problem with this is it is too light. It won't print out very well. And if even if it does print out, you're not going to be able to see your lines. So we're going to use another app to darken this and heighten the contrast and perfect it. So. I am going to right click on this image and I'm going to download it to a file where I know where it is. I'm going to save it. I'm onto my computer. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm going to save it onto my computer and then we're going to upload it into a different app on a different website to darken it. And this other website is going to blow your mind because it is just like Photoshop. You can even use the keyboard shortcuts if you've learned those on Photoshop, but it's it's free. Uh, you can use it for up to three images to save three images, I think a month. So you might want to pay for it, but it's really amazing. It's pixlr.com. So here I am typing in pixlr.com. Uh, photo editor, free Photoshop online Im imaging, image editing tool. And then over there on the left, that green button kind of right in the middle left screen. I'm going to click on that to choose a picture to work on. I'm going to go and upload this um, outline that I created over an artist assist app, and I'm going to upload it to pixlr.com photo editor. I've got a lot of things to look through. I'm trying to remember where I saved it. So I'm going to search in the upper right corner for my picture because I can't remember what folder I put. So there's a little side tip. 
If you can't find something, just go to the larger folder and just do a search over there in the top right. And I've been using that functionality a lot lately. All right, so here's what we've got. And it's got, you can't see it, but it's got part of the image uh, that's just clear on the side. So we're going to have to crop it. But here I'm doing um, uh, levels, and that's going to make my lines darker and heavier. So when I print it out, the printer, it will you will be able to see it. So I'm just moving these little lines to change the darkness of these gray lines. And I went to, I hit control and while I hold down control, I hit L and this little um, levels box pops up. So you, you can uh, use your keyboard shortcuts by hitting the button on your keyboard control and then hit L at the same time. And this little control box for levels will pop up But I highly recommend that you poke around in this um, online tool because there's so much you can do with this tool. All right, so now I've got the contrast higher, that my darks are darker, my lights are lighter, but it's still a little bit of a mess. Like the eye is just a blob just because of how the program interpreted it. So we're gonna clean it up some. So what we're going to do first, I believe I hit B. I'm going to hit the B uh, for the brush tool. And then up there where it says brush, there's a drop down menu. See where it says 40 and the downward facing triangle? Hit on that and you can resize your brush. So I'm going to make my brush smaller. I'm actually going to... Um, make it as hard as possible so my brush has hard edges. And then I'm going to go down here where you see the black and white circle, and I'm going to hit the arrow key to switch them. So now the color that will come out of my brush is white. So I can clean up around this eye with white to the edge of where I want my eye to be. So when I trace it, I can see the edge of the eye because right now it's just a black blob. So I'm gonna make my brush size a little different here. So I'm gonna try 10 pixels wide. And then I click anywhere outside of that box and it'll go away. And now I can click wherever I want white to be. And I'm just clicking inside the iris so that I can see where the middle is. When I go to print this out, I'll be able to see where my iris edges are. All right, I'm gonna change the size of my brush again. To smaller. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a line, that's what I'm doing. So two pixels wide is if you wanna draw a line. If you wanna draw, draw darker lines in the most important spots, like here along the edge of his mane, And this is really hard to do unless you have a pen tool. But here I'm drawing a, along the top of his face so I can see it better. You can press H on your keyboard and it'll pull up the hand and then you can move your picture around or you can use that navigate window over there on the right and see I'm just um, drawing a darker line along his tushy there so I make sure that it prints out well and along his neck because sometimes these don't print out as dark as they look on screen so I'm making sure that my most important lines are nice and dark with um, my brush tool. And now I'm gonna switch colors and use it as an eraser to erase a bunch of these darks so that I can see when I um, print this out, 
where my edges, my most important edges are. You don't need all of them. You just need the most important ones, most likely. All right, I'm going to make it quite a bit bigger. I want to erase large areas. Oops, <laughs> that's too large. Look at it, it uh, erased too much. So I hit control. I hold down the control and push Z and it undoes the last thing I did. Or you can go to edit, undo. It should also have a history window and you can navigate backwards or forwards in the things that you did. So you can go back and um, reinstate old image that you changed if you don't like what you've done. So I'm just erasing a bunch of this neck because I don't need any of that in my line drawing. I just need the basic edges of the lower part of his face. So I'm trying to erase under his face. So um, what you need to erase in your reference image is gonna be totally different than what I needed to erase. So it just depends on where your edges are, but I'm just cleaning up this image a little bit. So when I print it out, it'll be really obvious where my main edges are. And I'm just doing this for demonstration's sake. You can spend a lot more time than what I'm gonna do in this tutorial to really clean things up so that you can see the edges that you need to see. Like along his bottom lip needs to be cleaned up. All right, I'm also going to clean up all the, the junk around his eyes so I can just see where the very edge of the eye is for my um, line drawing because I can fill in the rest with my own hand drawing. I just want to make sure I get the basic shape and size and placement of the eye correctly in my line drawing. So I don't need all this um, confusing shadow. So I'm just going to erase everything that I don't need. I can make up the eye creases, that's pretty easy. But getting the placement and the size of the eye correct is pretty hard, <laughs> it can be. So that's what I like to focus on for my line drawings. So I'm just as you can see, I'm just getting the main outline of the eye cleaned up so I'll be able to see it when I print this out. And then you can see you can move around in the Im image by using the bars on the side to slide up and down. Cleaning out some of the ear so I can see where the edges are, especially where the ear meets the top of the head. I need to see where that boundary is and the um, angle that it's at as well. See here I'm erasing so that I can see where the ear meets the top of the head. I need that line. And I'm going to make my brush smaller to 10 pixels from 30. So I'm also erasing the edge of um, this clump of hair here for the mane so I can more easily see it. So I'm just erasing whatever I think I don't need. And then there's this middle clump of hair that I want to make sure that I get that in. And then a lot of this ear looks like gobbledygook, 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 I don't know. <laughs> but there's a lighter part of the ear that I want to make sure I have in the right spot, so I'm erasing that. 
And then his lip really blends in with the rest of his body. So I'm going to lighten that so I can see where it is in space when I do my line drawing. And the edge of his nose is really important, his nostril. Because it all gets lost in all the similar values that is captured by the Artist Assist app. Um, then I also want cannot see very well where his lower um, chin is. So I'm erasing around that so that when I go to put in my line drawing, I'll know where to put it. And I'm not doing every single detail for you guys in this tutorial. I just want to show you how to use this software because it's it's nice to have a free option. And if there's something else you want to learn how to do with this Pixlr um, Photoshop, it's just like Photoshop, um, let me know in the, the comments. And if I get more than two or three people asking for something in the comments, it would be fun to play with this in another tutorial. So let me know if you'd like to see more things that can be done with this very sophisticated Pixlr.com website. Now we have the image to the point where we're ready to print. Uh, if we're happy with it, I would probably mess with this more if I was going to actually use it, but this is for demonstration purposes only. I'm going to print this. So first you go to print. I'm going to this look in the upper left hand corner with me where I'm pointing at file. I don't know if you can see my pointer, but I'm hitting file and then this pull down menu drops down. By the way, here's edit where you can go to redo, undo, paste, transform your image. Um, here's under image. You can find a way to resize your image. You can change your canvas size, which actually will add borders or more room to your actual image for canvas size. Smart resize, I don't know what that is. AI super scale, that's cool. So it uses artificial intelligence. If you have a picture that's too small, it will use artificial intelligence to fill in the pixels to make it bigger. I need to try that. That's really cool. Um, layer. Layers is really, a, I'm surprised they have layers. It's very sophisticated ability to um, work in kind of like layers of saran wrap. So um, you can also make a layer. You can import a photo into this app and then add an, a layer on top and trace on that layer as, as if it's a piece of tracing paper. And then you get rid of the color photo and you just have the tracing paper trace layer. And you can also trace that way in this app um, if you want to trace by hand instead of having the Artist Assist app do it. Here is uh, if you have a color image, you can adjust the colors and the um, color balance and um, turn it black and white, etc. Lots of different choices here. Filter. Um, you can apply filters to your picture to make it more look look more like a painting, for example. Here's where you go to view to pull up all the different um, panels that you can use and you can zoom also and help go to help if you have questions. A and they also have YouTube tutorials on their own Pixlr. Looks like Pixlr has a YouTube channel where they have tutorials on how to use Pixlr. So this is a really cool app. So you might want to do a little bit of learning and see what else you can use this app for. But anyway, let's print. We're going to go to File, then I'm going to pull down to Print. Let's see what we've got. OK, so it's not on that page. It, what happened here is that my image is too big to print out on an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper. So that's not going to work. So we need to resize it. So I'm going to get a Cancel. And now I'm going to go to image right up here next to edit and layer. See where I am up here. I'm at image. I'm going to go to image size and I'm going to double click on one of these numbers and make it a little smaller. So I'm going to go from 1800 basically to 1500. I'm going to hit apply. 
And now let's see what it looks like if I print now. So I'm going to file and print again. See over here, I'm over at print, I'm moving this around so you can see where I am. And it's still on three pieces of paper, but it's it's probably good enough that I could just choose to print page number two. So even pages only. So then it's uh, see over here, you can you can pick which pages you want. You can hit custom and then just say I want page two. Over here on the right where I am, I'm trying to make the um, the entry bubbles over here um, flash so you can see where I am to adjust that. But your um, depending on your printer, you might get a different um, menu, slightly different than what I have, because different printers have different um, panels they use. But anyway, so this looks good. I'm going to hit print fitting. This will make a nice eight by 10 inch painting size. Now, if you want to make bigger pictures, then you can resize it and then print it on several pieces of paper, then tape them together. And then you can maybe have an 11 by 14 size or larger. So you just have to play around with it and figure out how to make it work for you to make the size you want. All right, I'm going to print and then we'll take a look at it. Do you want to come say hi to all my people? Hello. Be sure to like the video and subscribe. <laughs> so you can learn not just the how, but the why of watercolor. Yeah. So you move along your art journey a lot faster. Can you say all that? No. No. Do you want to help me? Okay. Okay. Okay, so grab the print and show everybody what it looks like now. You always what the print looks like. Okay, show it, make sure it shows. So here's the, here's the line drawing though. Um, now what we're gonna do is put this up against the window or against the light box and put our paper on top of it for watercolors. If you are gonna transfer this to a canvas, what you can do is, and you can do this for watercolor paper too, you, you scrub soft graphite onto the back and then you can put it on your canvas and then um, transfer it that way by using a sharp, like a pen, like a um, ballpoint pen or um, whatever to push onto the paper and it'll act like transfer paper. So that's two ways. So I'll show you how I do it though. Okay, like that. And then, can you come over here, sweetheart, so people can see what I'm doing? All right, so. Here's my line drawing. I'm gonna put it on the window like that, and then I can put my paper on here, and then I can use a number two pencil and transfer it onto my paper. And that's my favorite way to trace. I use Photoshop because I have Photoshop, but if you don't have Photoshop, this is one of many free apps that you can use to do the same thing that Photoshop does. A lot of free um, apps out there now are just as good as Photoshop for the basic things like tracing. So I hope that was helpful. By the way, I would love it if you would leave me a comment about any kind of technology that you would like to learn to use to enhance your art career or um, anything art related for example, I was recently sharing with one of my friends who's also an artist how to use Google Photos and how to search through your Google Photos in order to easily find reference material of things that you've taken. Uh, Google Photos is very powerful and I highly recommend using Google Photos if you're not already because you can upload all the pictures you've ever taken from your phone you can upload it onto Google Photos and you can upload pictures that you've taken with a camera or anything. And it's a really great way to archive um, your photos because you can search them. For example, if you take a picture of a tree, then 
uh, three years later, you can search in Google Photos, you can search tree, and Google Photos will pull up all the photos you've taken that feature trees, or most of them. So that's just an example. So if there's anything that you would like me to do a technology slash art related tutorial on, I would love to, because a lot of my audience is older and they get overwhelmed by technology and it just doesn't have to be that way. So hit me up in the comments. What would you like to learn about? Want to say bye? Bye. All right, bye. I hope you have a good day. Be sure to subscribe to learn not just the how, but the why of watercolor. So you move along your art journey a and lot faster. Like. Leave us a like. <laughs> yeah, please. Bye. Okay, bye. <laughs> When I grow up, I'm going to make lots of you. Yeah, that's a great idea. Bye. Bye. Good job, Parker. Thanks for helping me. Parker doesn't like to eat just any chicken eggs because if they're nice, sweet, little cute chicks that are in the eggs, he doesn't want to hurt those. So yeah. he only eats naughty chicken eggs if those chickens are naughty. Yeah, because I hate being mean. Yeah, you hate being mean? Yeah.